when we talk about uh, the World Cup, the Diagnostic World Cup oral cavity, the, uh, the goal is the combination of uh, endoscopy, of course the bioendoscopy, and the imaging, because uh, we have to combine the information coming from the mucosa spreading and the depth of the invasion, especially regarding to the last version of uh, TNM staging that uh, make a, a differentiation between uh, the depth uh, less and more than uh, five millimeters. And uh, in, uh, in, this, in light of this, uh, MRI uh, is the gold standard, but uh, in the, there is an emerging interest uh, regarding the, the uh, ultrasonography, uh, um, uh, regarding the, the, the evaluation of the deep, uh, they found in the the last uh, review a very good correlation between the estimation, the evaluation of the depth, and the final histology. So, in uh, ultrasonography, uh, become a, a, a very useful uh, tool uh, compared to the MRI in this kind of uh, evaluation. Uh, this is a, um, a study that uh, we wrote uh, several years ago just to, to uh, evaluate the value in a group of patients affected by oral, uh, 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 neoplasm in oral cavity or pharynx. And uh, we divide the cohort of patients, around 100 patients, in two groups. 34 was untreated patient, so the staging group, it was uh, uh, no biopsy and no uh, treatment. And the second group, 61 patient, was patient follow in the office after uh, surgery or uh, uh, no surgical protocol, like so radiation or, or chemo radiation. And uh, even uh, in, uh, in this court of, of patient, we have a benefit of a 27% diagnostic be uh, benefit using uh, eye definition combined uh, with uh, NBI endoscopy using rigid endoscope in the evaluation oral cavity and flexible endoscope, video endoscope for uh, oropharynx. And uh, the benefit was achieved in terms of, uh, in the group of uh, staging, in uh, upstaging, again, uh, identification on the synchrono synchronous tumor, and also identification of the unknown primaries, the one cases. In the follow-up group, uh, we have uh, early detection uh, of persistent, of recurrence, persistent after radiotherapy, incomplete tumor response, uh, a identification of metaclonosis tumor. So is uh, another uh, proof that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, more information using uh, uh, the combination of high definition and NBI compared to the white light. In terms of uh, uh, sensitivity uh, and uh, negative pr uh, predictive value and accuracy, we have a significant difference uh, between uh, the two methods. I mean, uh, always the, the uh, white light uh, co combined to high definition and NBI combined to uh, high definition. This uh, is uh, another, another uh, um, paper that uh, uh, collect patient, uh, uh, again affected by uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity, oral pharyngeal, and uh, we try to to evaluate uh, the, the difference uh, value or the, the different role of uh, MBI in the different subsite of the oral cavity and the oral pharynx. And we compare as uh, uh, Farah uh, 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 showed this morning, uh, three types of evaluation. The conventional oral examination without any magnification and you uh, showed this morning, the white light and uh, the MBI. And we examined uh, untreated uh, potential malignancy uh, uh, lesion like uh, leucoplechia and erythroplechia. And all these uh, uh, 
lesion was treated with excisional biopsy um, after the examination just to have a double blind uh, uh, con histology control. Uh, again, uh, the MBI uh, gives us uh, a decrease of the rate of false positive and false negative rate compared to the uh, standard white light and the conventional examination. So the uh, um, um, true positive was the association between uh, suspicion lesion and positive histology because uh, clinically, the, according to the Shuba classification, the uh, lesion was divided in uh, suspicious and uh, innocuous. So uh, we didn't find any difference between the uh, subsite of uh, the oral cavity. Uh, uh, if you remember this morning, the classification of uh, lean regarding uh, the different type uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, epithelia um, show that uh, the limitation of MBI where the epithelium is uh, too thick and uh, with keratinization. But uh, if you take as a measure the distance between the surface and the apex of the papilla, you, you see that uh, this, there is the leverage of the, the distance and uh, also the, uh, the mean papillary height. You see that uh, uh, the difference between the thickness of the oral subsite, black dots, and the mean of papillary apex epithelial surface distance in the, in the, semi, uh, semi, uh, in the same uh, anatomical areas. The penetration of the green light, uh, you remember the green light uh, is uh, about uh, 240 uh, um, nanometer, and the blue light, uh, the penetration is uh, 160, is uh, uh, always uh, superior uh, uh, in between uh, the, the, the uh, two average uh, um, distance. So this means that uh, you can see easily the intrapapillary uh, loops uh, uh, or the dark spot uh, even in, uh, in case of, of, of six uh, very thick uh, epithelium. So we didn't find any difference uh, in the different societal oral cavity. But uh, of course, uh, this is, is our result, uh, and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, uh, because uh, Farah has probably a different uh, result compared to our results. Uh, again, uh, some example: uh, the difference between the white light and the MBI. Again, the possibility to um, better uh, evaluate the extension of uh, uh, the lesion and. Uh, uh, the uh, possibility to recognize the atypical vascular pattern inside uh, the lesion. So uh, you can appreciate, I have not the laser, that uh, according to what we heard uh, this morning, the, 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 margin, the surgical margin for the resection must be beyond the line between the healthy tissue and the MBI and not uh, uh, around uh, the uh, simple erythroplakia. Uh, this is another case uh, where uh, MBI play an important role. The follow of the lichen planus. Everybody has uh, this kind of experience. Um, uh, a diffuse uh, erythroplakia. You don't know where uh, you have to take the biopsy because uh, you have uh, alteration of all the mucosa. MBI is very useful to uh, uh, address the, the, the right place where uh, perform the biopsy. Also, uh, help you to, to follow the patient uh, without the need to perform a necessary biopsy. Uh, this uh, reduces a lot the morbidity of the patient. And this is another case of microinvasive carcinoma, again, to show the, the different appearance between the white light 
and uh, the uh, MBI. Uh, I, I don't go in the detail uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, paper uh, written by Farah uh, because uh, he presented uh, uh, in a very comprehensive uh, 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 way. But uh, just to simplify, I, I, I show you the, the difference in terms of uh, 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 abnormality, uh, genetic abnormality between the margin defined with uh, MBI, defined with uh, Y light, and uh, in the core of the tumor. Is correct, Kevin? Yes. So, uh, of course, uh, you can see a, a, a very um, important difference in, uh, in uh, um, uh, genetic uh, uh, abnormality between the, the three uh, margin. And uh, of course, uh, the resection of surgical margin determined by MBI, in the wider resection, rather than uh, Y light, leave less potentially malignant residual tissue. And this was uh, confirmed by the last result presented this morning by uh, Farah in terms of recurrence free survival. And this uh, uh, allows us to, to put uh, the MBI, the constant optical biopsy, in uh, between the zone three and uh, four. This is a, a paper from Bradley from uh, UK, uh, where uh, uh, underlined that we while light you can uh, um, have uh, extended uh, a little more the, the limits of the resection compared to the visible lesion with the conventional examination. Uh, MBI extend this uh, uh, limit uh, to the histological uh, uh, zone, but probably after the, the talk of this morning, we can gain some other uh, information and uh, extend uh, to the <laughs> uh, molecular zone. So we, I have to change after this morning this slide. Uh, probably I have the same talk in London uh, in the next month, so I change a little bit after the, the, your talk, uh, this slide. <laughs> and this is the review uh, of uh, uh, um, the role of MBI in, in oral cavity orophenesis, but uh, it's uh, always difficult to put together the result because the selection of the patient is different, the technique uh, uh, that the uh, use uh, is different, so uh, we have uh, an average idea about the sensitivity, the specificity of uh, this tool uh, in this uh, anatomical site. Another uh, uh, challenge, uh, challenge uh, role of uh, MBI is uh, uh, in uh, recognize the unknown primary squamous cell carcinoma. This is a brand new paper published a few months ago. Everybody knows uh, the, the incidence of uh, uh, unknown primary, uh, uh, the increase, uh, increasing association with HPV uh, infection. Uh, most common stage at the diagnosis is the uh, um, N2A or B. The level two is the most uh, commonly involved. A bilateral uh, involvement is uh, quite rare. Uh, normally, the, the standard workup for a no primary start from the cytology uh, that uh, represents the gold standard to, to make a di uh, diagnosis, followed by a complete uh, uh, imaging uh, workup in terms of CT, MRI, and PET, uh, of course combined uh, with the uh, standard white light pan endoscopy. Uh, in our spinner, we change a little bit uh, this uh, workup, introducing the, the pan endoscopy with uh, MBI and in the target biopsy in the office when you recognize a suspicious area with a bioendoscopy. If uh, also the bioendoscopy is negative, we perform the same uh, bioendoscopy in OR, in general anesthesia, with the rigid endoscope. 
and uh, we perform uh, an biopsy. If uh, uh, we don't recognize uh, any suspicious area, even in OR, we perform a mucosectomy of the base of the tongue and tosilectomy, just to, to, uh, to have the confirmation uh, if uh, really uh, or no primary, or if we find uh, a, a, a primary. So about the um, no primary, uh, the number is increased <coughs> in the last decade, uh, uh, increased auto relation with uh, HPV. So the presentation usually is very uh, low stage for the primary, a high N stage. So sometimes the people come with a big mess in the neck without any evidence of the primary. Uh, by contrary, in, uh, in case of uh, no lesion, no related to HPV, we have uh, high stage, uh, T stage, uh, and uh, low N stage. So this uh, is uh, 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 one clinical feature that distinguish the related and non-related uh, uh, um, uh, tumor. And uh, from this uh, uh, paper uh, uh, published by Ni. Uh, the uh, imaging result less uh, useful to detect the occult uh, T in the last decade. In, uh, and uh, by contrast, uh, the bioendoscopy increased the sensibility and the uh, specificity. In fact, in this paper, uh, Ni uh, uh, showed that MBI examination detects the primary tumor site in uh, at least half of the patient. So increase the, the detection rate compared to the imaging, probably because it's more related to oropharyngeal uh, tumor. And uh, to find uh, the primary is very important because there is a, a significant difference when you find the, the primary in oropharynge and uh, between, uh, uh, compared to the true and no primary when you don't find the, the, the primary tumor because probably you, you can tailor uh, your uh, um, therapy. Uh, for instance, uh, in case of uh, uh, no surgical protocol, you can reduce the dose and the field of irradiation compared to the annoy primary where you have to extend the field of irradiation from the skull base to the uh, clavicle. So this is the protocol that we use. The inclusion criteria was the positive uh, cytology for squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, 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 the standard endoscopy with white light uh, and the imaging protocol was negative. So all the 29 patients that uh, uh, come to uh, our department uh, 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 were negative in, in the uh, traditional protocol. Um, and the presentation was uh, uh, 4162A, 12N2B, uh, uh, and, uh, and so and so. So uh, we uh, performed the bioendoscopy in the office. Uh, uh, when uh, we uh, found a suspicious area, we perform a, um, a, a target biopsy to confirm uh, uh, the, the primary tumor. Uh, if uh, we didn't find uh, any suspicious area, we repeat the procedure in uh, the OR. Uh, again, if we, we don't find uh, the uh, um, uh, the, the place, the suspicious place uh, to perform a target uh, biopsy, we perform mucosectomy <coughs> plus uh, tonsillectomy just to, to uh, have the, the histologi histological confirmation. By contrast, in patient uh, negative to the MBI in the office, we, we send direct in the OR and we repeat uh, uh, this uh, uh, operation. So finally, about uh, the 11 patients that uh, we, uh, where we found uh, some suspicious area, 10 was confirmed to be uh, true positive uh, because we found uh, 
in, uh, in the office uh, a suspicious area and we perform biopsy. Only one uh, was a false uh, positive and we perform a, 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 a mucosectomy, a tonsillectomy, and even after this procedure was confirmed um, uh, false positive. By contrast, in the group uh, ne negative uh, at the first uh, uh, examination, we repeated the examination in the OR, and uh, uh, 11 was confirmed, uh, 18, all 18 was confirmed negative, but after uh, mucosectomy, tonsillectomy, we found uh, one positive uh, uh, um, uh, lesion, so we have uh, one uh, false negative. So finally, we achieve uh, a sensibility of 91, specificity of 95, and uh, accuracy uh, of 90, with a negative pre uh, predictive value of 95%. This is an example. I, I just uh, show you uh, the white light. And uh, now we, MBI, you can immediately recognize uh, the suspicious area in the inferior uh, uh, part of the tonsil. And in this case, uh, we uh, perform a target biopsy in the office to confirm uh, the, the histology. And this is another case where in white light uh, we didn't see any uh, suspicious area, but uh, again uh, with uh, MBI uh, going uh, very close uh, to the, the point, uh, we have uh, some uh, adjunct information uh, about uh, the location of the lesion. And uh, in this case, uh, we perform uh, and, uh, a biopsy, a target biopsy that confirm to be a squamous cell carcinoma. You can see very well now with uh, MBI. So both of the cases come to us uh, without uh, any uh, diagnosis, uh, we found uh, the, the primary in the office uh, with a, a was confirmed by the target biopsy. So we didn't perform any adjunctive uh, treatment. Uh, you can see uh, here the, the, the location of the tumor uh, regarding the, the first cases, uh, even regarding the, the last cases uh, here. Okay, so this is another case uh, with uh, uh, the uh, magnetic resonance was completely uh, negative regarding the base of the tongue. The white light, uh, the standard white light uh, was uh, negative, but again uh, we have uh, just an uh, hypertrophy of the left uh, base of the tongue. And uh, with MBI we discover a suspicious area on the left. Okay, again here. So this is another case. The magnetic res uh, resonance was negative again. The white light uh, show, didn't show any suspicious area. Of course it takes a, a more time to explore uh, the base of the tongue you need uh, a compliance of the patient, but uh, if you go uh, closer to the mucosa and uh, you uh, change from white light uh, to MBI different times, you can uh, recognize uh, the lesion. And uh, it's also important to clean the mucosa from the secretion. And uh, again, uh, you can recognize the dark spot uh, of the tonsil. Okay. So this is the recent review uh, about uh, the unknown primary uh, and BI uh, examination uh, detect the primary tumor in a, 
a wider range uh, of uh, uh, in a wider rate of uh, um, detection, but again the uh, different uh, uh, type of examination, uh, the different selection of patient uh, uh, make uh, this range very wide. Okay, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.